previously on Chilling. There are those who enter a building professionally or socially in just a second. All eyes on them, leaving individuals gasping for breath. It's a feel-good factor. A lot of people pleasure. use, yeah, it's pleasure. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure thing. So I, I cannot, in all honesty, say what the basis of people using drugs is. But a lot of people, once they start, it is very hard to stop because what it does, it kind of blinds you to the consequences of your actions. So you go out there and you do your thing. You feel good, and in that moment, you're fantastic. You're awesome. You are indestructible. But what you don't see is what you're doing to everyone else or the way you look. Good evening, chillers, and welcome back to the second part with Miss Nana Kaja. Now, uh, it's Kaga, right? Kaga. That's how they pronounce it. Kaga, yeah. Kaga. <laughs> I like the way how you pronounce it. Now, Miss Nana had her first breakthrough on the Ugandan scene on a TV show oh, called wow. Jam Agenda. We went that far back. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we're going to dig that far back. She, as you can see, she's so vibrant. <laughs> the formidable Nana Kaga Hill. Thank you. Now, we're starting with the hot seat segment. Now, I get to ask you rapid questions. You okay. have to reciprocate as fast as you can. Okay. Are you ready? I am. Let's do the segment. All right then. Hmm. <clears throat> what is your guilt pleasure? My what? Your guilt pleasure. My guilt pleasure? Yeah. Oh my God, shoes. What? Shoes. Okay. Shoes. Yeah, that's I know. High heels. What, like, is, what oh. is your obsession with high heels? Oh by the my way? god, you have no idea. Have you ever felt a really well made high heel? <laughs> it makes me feel like I'm about to take over the world in a pair of heels. Okay. Yes. That's great. Mm -hmm. What did you used to eat during pregnancy? Oh, cake. Chocolate cake. Chocolate cake? Yeah. What is on your bucket list? Uh, to actually, basically, uh, good God, bucket list. Yeah. Uh, ooh, I want to drive a Ducati motorbike. Okay. Something people don't know about you. Very fast. Oh, I'm a, a loner. I'm a loner. Okay. Childish celebrity crush? Oh my God. Boys to men, Michael, the guys with a deep voice. Well, though we've come. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, End of the Someone you would trade places with for a day. Michelle Obama. Okay. Oh, and Beyonce. And Beyonce. Because she wears heels. Like she rocks the world in How about Jello? Nah. She also good nah. in heels. Nah, 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 nah. You know, at the beginning of, I'm of the other part, I compared you to Jello. Well, Jello, Jello, uh, you know, my butt's better than Jello's. That's all I'm saying. Oh. oh. No, you didn't. I did. I no. went there. I went there. Hashtag <laughs> that Jello. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag butt better than Jello. Characteristic you treasure most in people? Uh, ambition. Okay. Uh, the last one, secret talent. Oh my God, I know how to roll my tongue. And, do it? Uh, yeah. Do you know how to whistle? Yes, that too, but that's like, I can't do it. It's a little illegal. I think the pornography <laughs> like, committee would be on me if I did it. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't, don't. Oh, get your mind out of the gutter. Yeah, no, get I your would. mind out of the gutter. You, know, no one would you have go no that idea way. what I can do with my tongue. That's the thing, you don't. So okay. I'm, I'm about to just, that is part of the constitution of the government <laughs> of Uganda. <laughs> funniest fun encounter, that's the last one. Funniest fun encounter, mm. that is actually when I met, what's that guy, Hugh Hefner. Hugh? Hugh Hefner, where, where RIP. Where you? At the Playboy Mansion, when I used to be in Hollywood. Oh. Yeah, he thought I was a nice slice of chocolate. Oh, apparently, yeah. according to the him. The whole man just died. Yeah, I know. R.I.P. Hugh. You did well. Thank you. The whole six segment is over. <laughs> Chilling. Now, as I said, we're going to go way back. Yes. From where it started. Take me back. Now, you were born in Nairobi. Yes, I hospital. was. Hospital. Yes. But Kenyatta. We, we also have hospitals here. Why? Um, Idi Amin was after my father. My mom was about nine months pregnant. And uh, they asked my dad to do the road in Katwe in like 24 hours because there were a couple of dignitaries coming in. And he couldn't do it. So he drove, instead of driving that direction, he drove in that direction and took my mother with him. So no, which I was direction is towards there? the border of Nairobi, sorry, Kenya and Uganda. And we crossed the border, I think, a day after they crossed the what border. What was the story with your dad and, and the guy? Um, no, nothing. He was just, my dad worked for KCC at the time and he was the civil engineer in charge of roads. So 
um my dad's really really awesome yeah. he's really really intelligent my dad he's a civil engineer at kagan partners i don't know if you know them but he so built... your name nene has a fascinating story behind I it know. tell me about it my real name is kagan Okay, so Kagare. <laughs> Look through that camera and say it because I want the whole My real to... name is Ah, Kagari. you been taking over shirts. <laughs> I thought my you'd be shy to say it. And it was a combination of my dad's name, Kaga, and Mwagari. So Ooh. they gave me Kagari. So what about Nana? Uh, Nana is like, you know, when your mom, my mom thought I'd be the last born. Mm. Little did she know. Mm. So they used to call me Omwana. Like Omwana, Mumukozechi, Omwana, 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 baby. So I grew up telling people, what's your name? I wanted to say Omwana, but I would be like, Nana. Nana. Then my dad took me to kindergarten, and mm. it was one of those mornings. I won't say what, mm. but he registered me as Nana. And oh, that yeah. was it. So it's thick. It's stuck. Is it the same name in your passport? Okay, Kagari Nana. Kagari, yeah, Kagari. I, I still, I, Kagari is awesome. Do you know what I mean? Very few people are called Kagari. Mm. Yeah, so I'm like, I'm owning that one. I'm owning it. So tell me about America, the Hollywood dream. You know, once everybody talks about America, <laughs> the one we perceive on TV. Right. It's, is it so much different? I mean, do you literally, is the Hollywood sign there or is it just a telegram? It is there. <laughs> <laughs> is it like a hologram? Is yeah. It? No, it's there. Um, I found Hollywood really empty, for want of a better word. I think there's a lot of damaged people that go over there for validation. I think there's a lot of talented, damaged. yeah, damaged. Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of people that go into acting are trying to escape from who they really are or they're just really talented. Mm -hmm. um, Hollywood is one of those. I used to joke that um, Hollywood is in Los Angeles and I'd say Los Angeles eats its young. Mm -hmm. The drive to be perfect is absolutely crazy. Oh, yeah. People go over and beyond to be the perfect size zero, to have the perfect hair, the perfect nails, the perfect figure, the perfect but I, I, I just, I would not subject it's my America daughter. It's America and it's Yeah, Hollywood. I know, but I would not subject my daughter to it. It you takes know, speaking, away from speaking you. Speaking about the, 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 the actors you say, I find actors to be so boring. Tell no. me why. No, no, tell me why. Because all they gotta do is embody characters and you once are it's done, joking. No, once it's done Sit down. Please no, please. like for real. Like for me, once the character is done. Do you know how exhausting it is to try and live and bring to life something that someone's written on paper? It is hard. It is very hard. Mm. So when someone tells me actors are boring, it's because either, you know, there's two types of actors. The mm. ones that are like introverts and they only step out of themselves when they're actually going to play larger than life characters. Mm. But in normal life, that's probably why you find them boring because they're just like, they just don't really engage with the world. The only time you really engage with them is when they step on set. Mm. And those are the geniuses. Those are the ones I call the surgeons, when they dissect a character and they bring it to life. As a creator, when someone walks on set and reads a part and brings it to life, I almost want to kiss them and be like, oh my God, <laughs> thank you. And then of course, uh, most act, like most people look down on the people that do drama. It's the part where we wash our hands. Is it? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. We're Many going to thanks, have a Adam. meal. Oh, I see. There's a whole meal coming. I'm telling you. Oh, wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is. But, so, actors in general, much. I think, are underestimated. They're undervalued. Mm. And they're overhyped. Okay. Is that one way to say it? Um, people, when they meet them, they don't see the human beings. They see a package thank you very much you know and it's an interesting thing yeah. what is that i'm seeing spaghetti uh I, i'll ask your phone when it comes <laughs> i okay. think this is miss me oh wow okay i hope you have that i will get rid of that and, and they then... are going to get rid of it so yeah. actors to me are the most unsung heroes okay of our generation because because what, what at what age were you then when I started acting? When you lived the Hollywood dream. Yeah. Oh, I was 21. Good God, it feels like so long ago. You know, correct me if I'm wrong. Yes. It says somewhere that you you are a proprietor of a, a shop, a clothes shop. Yes. On the Boulevard Avenue or something? Uh, yes, I, um, I had a... a um, I, I'm, I'm obsessed with vintage. Vintage is clothes from the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Why? I'm a 70s child. I like, I rock the floor and the jumpsuit like I was born into it. You know, you could literally say you're 70s child. I, I say, know. Get out of here. I, I get out of here. I'm like, the funk is real. I'm just like <laughs> living the life. 
But I owned a shop like that on Santa Monica Boulevard in LA, mm. and a lot of movie execs would come in to rent costumes from the 40s, 50s. Movie studios would do that, and a lot of actors would just come in just because it was, it's an eclectic type of shopping experience. You mm. get, you buy individual pieces. So I, I brought that same experience back to Kampala. I still have a shop. Mm and it's called Chloe's Closet, after my daughter. You never talk about it. I know, but those who know about Chloe's Closet, it's the best kept secret in the city. <laughs> this is like... It must be the best kept secret. It is. I, I tell should you. should check it out sometime. I, I should. It has should. kids' clothes. It has men and women, it's not kids. Not kids yet. Huh? A little. A little of the kids' ones. Okay. What it is, it's very simple. I normally get merchandise from... Uh, shows friends of mine, stylists in the US, and mm. I sell them. So mm. it's cool. Okay. Mm. So uh, let's talk about the appearance you appeared on, uh, the time you appeared on BET. What mm. was that all about? 106 and Park. You know, 106 and Park used to be the show. Mm. <laughs> yeah. It's no longer on TV anymore. So they were looking for um, two TV presenters. Mm. You and want they, some? Mm. Come back up. It's some. They auditioned over 5,000 people, mm. and I ended up in the last five. So um, I went out there, lived in New York, hated it. Mm. I can't stand New York. No offense to any New Yorkers out there. Mm. Mm. And then, you know, you saw the part, and um, at the end of it, basically we were asked if you could actually take your entire life and relocate to New York, and I couldn't give a definite answer, so I had to remove myself from the running. Yeah, so I just didn't, yeah, New York's not for me. <laughs> no, it's quick, it's fast, everything's small, apartments are small. <laughs> and so I just didn't, no. The subway, have you been on the New York subway? I've not even no, been No, it's America. not for me. I'm so spoiled, I'm like, can you bring a car? Yeah. No, Ugandans are like, hey, okay, anyway. No you taxi, know? taxis are the everywhere. The taxis are there, mm. and, uh, but you know, again with America. And they're sort of so private. Yeah, there's an undertone of racism. In America, there's always an undertone, yeah. especially in New York. So I not... will ask you about that another time. So <laughs> yeah. now, um, you you're part of a name called Lupita Nyong'o. Oh, Lupita! She, yeah, she is one of the most visible yes. celebrities we have in East yes. Africa. Yes, yes. And she literally reflects to your kind of life you used to. I, I, I only think maybe you had much better life, you know, because uh, maybe things are, were a little bit different. Uh, no, it's so so. so <laughs> what do you think odd. about the Lupita phenomenon? I think Lupita, good God, kudos to her. I mean, do you know, it's really, really hard to make it in Hollywood with skin that dark, especially if you're African. There's a disconnect because you're not quite African-American and you're not quite foreign enough. You're African. And she stuck with it. She didn't bleach herself. Her hair is natural. But she's half Mexican and African. No. She grew up in Mexico. That doesn't make her Mexican. One of her parents is Mexican. No. Am, Gar am I no. having my research? Yeah, name? she's not. She's full-blooded Kenyan. Mm. Guaranteed. She grew up in but Mexico. Why does she always her parents were so diplomats. Mexican, her parents African. were diplomats and they were signed to Mexico. Mm. So she lived in Mexico and went to school in the US, but she's not. No. Can you relate with what she's going through? I can. I can. I can honestly relate, but one my one disappointment with her is that um, she seems to have taken on this mantra which happens to lots of black people in Hollywood where she's she's a white people's black person. What does that even mean? Explain. It means she's not. She's one of us, but she's one of us for white people. But is it about the accent? No, it's just, um, do you ever really see her engage in anything that's African driven? Like Queen of Katwe, yes, she came here, but she didn't come here to do something or promote Uganda. She came because she was being paid to do a movie based in Uganda. She did not come here to promote the country or speak about it or raise awareness for it, no. She did not make any visits to orphanages or literally engage with the local populace. No, she didn't do that. I think we're gonna take a little break. Uh, Just a little pause. A wee wee break like this because we're running onto a that, different type of petrol. <laughs> went into the Wasuti era. Did you mm. see Lupita do that? No. We're and gonna take that. a little break uh, as we enjoy our feast. Chef Frank has prepared for us here at Cake Choice. So see you later just in a hot bit. Chilling. You get time to lean, you get time to clean. Let's go, pick this place up. Come, Come on, honey, I need a break. Oh, sit 
any more you like. Oh, I think I better sit at the counter. My daughter just had a baby, a boy. I'm on my way to see her. When are you due? My doctor says um, just under a month. Really? It's just that I wish uh, it, it, it was a little bit rushed. It's slower, yeah. You know what? I have a feeling. I think everything's going to be all right. You'll see. Can I get you a coffee? Oh, yeah. Coffee would be great. Cream and sugar? Um, black. Do you have any uh, equal? Oh, sweet. That's fun. You know, I, I am kind of hungry. I've been stuck in traffic driving all day. Thank you very much oh. for staying with us. We're still enjoying our meal and uh, she just told me something pretty much sensitive about Lupita. You know, I never noticed, you know, when you look at her. But she was, she actually spent most of her time here at National Theatre, mm. where you were. Mm. And she, she was, because <coughs> yep. her staple was almost, she, she was groomed from here. Yeah, Maisha. I'm very aware of the background, and I'm aware that she went to Yale, and I'm aware she did drama. But what I'm trying to say is very simple. Mm. In the entire time since she rose to popularity, yes, she's given speeches about being a dark-skinned woman and how empowering it is that she faced her own skin color and she overcame the urge to want to be lighter skin. But what I'm saying, what has she done in terms of humanitarian work for mm. the continent? Mm. And I know it, it sounds a little entitled, but when you've been privileged to be so blessed, you have to find a way to give back to yeah. where you come from. Yeah. And I am yet to hear anything with her name on it, unless I am, um, you know, my head is buried in, in sand. <laughs> but um, I'm yet to hear any initiatives that are Africa-driven that she's involved in. Mm. You know? Okay, let's talk about your acting career. Yes. Yeah, it, it start, it, of course it was born in America. You, you started acting from America. Yeah. Is, it, is that true It was born course? in my parents' living room in Masajia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes. I mean the acting aspect. Okay. I don't. I don't mean the person. Yeah. Okay. No. Actually, the acting aspect. You should talk to my dad. Apparently, every time we got like guests, I would climb on top of the table and start like narrating stories. Okay. So it started when I was very young, and my father was like, "Oh God, you know, we are never." But nakatemba. But nakatemba. So yeah, yeah, but yeah. So how, how where did you get that drive and the tenacity to? My mother. To stick to that line. My mom. Sure, she's my mother is a very talented woman. She can imitate any voice. Um, like her presence in people, you can't help but gravitate towards her. She is ten, ten women in one. Mm. And she's all, what's that song? I'm every woman with me. Yeah. So, no, she's, um, and my father as well. My I father was really molded me. craving for a drink. Were you? Mm -hmm. My father molded me into. Thank you, Marcia into okay my my talent i get from my mom mm. my ambition and drive and discipline to achieve what i need to do i get from my father oh yeah so your mom gets all the credits and, and my dad that, that's why you're so passionate mm. when you speak about your parents mm. my parents are like ninjas <laughs> <laughs> why I, didn't you why didn't you i mean this all this why didn't you try out modeling because it's a confession you made why didn't you model oh my god point? i am five foot not even an extra inch comes unless I'm wearing heels. I mean, to be honest, I did height, do... Height not, has nothing to do with... I did do commercial and print modeling mm. in the US, which is basically advertising everything on, in a magazine, that's mm. toothpaste and all that stuff. But the runways, nah. I don't think Gucci would take me. I'm not tall enough. Okay. Mm. So what sort of grade do you live by in life? Impossible is just a word. Impossible is actually I am possible. You can try out anything. Yeah. I literally, I have this thing. As soon as something looks hard, mm. it is worth doing. Mm. Okay. And I think in life you cannot have lived a life worth living if everything's come easy to you. And I think you're not strong. And I think you don't have a story to tell. There is no journey to document mm. if everything comes easy to you. But I think that we are forged from fire. Mm. Until you've fallen down and picked yourself up ten times, yeah. you have no idea what you're capable of. Mm. And I've picked myself up so many times. <laughs> speaking about that, speaking about picking yeah. yourself up, and we're not going to dwell much into that because the world knew, the world heard yes. about what happened with Beneath the Lies. Yes. After two episodes, yes. 
yeah. and then the photo just went missing. Woo. Just got here. How? Tell your husband you're not feeling well and get the hell out of here. Oh no, that's lying and that's just plain bad manners. Why did you leave the party with my wife? Still, that felt like to me I, that I, will I, feel, to me that feels like a, a setback. Yes. But you kept your head up. Yes. And kept on moving. Why? Um, you know, in life, when you get hit by something like that, you're allowed to curl up and cry. What you're not allowed to do is feel sorry for yourself because other people are in worse places. And the moment you give up is the moment you betray your dream. The moment you say, bigger, for want of a better word, is the day even the, earth, the, the universe gives up on you because you have not given yourself a chance to say, you know, it's so sad because me and my business partner, Cedric Babu, we lost beneath the lights. We lost everything. A lot of people don't understand what it's like to shoot something, invest so much money in it, and then it's gone. There's nothing to show for it. Nothing. And not even a trace. Nothing. And for about a few months, it was, it was horror. I literally would wake up and think it was something that didn't happen. I played it in my head. And then I remember talking to Cedric and saying, at the very least, we have to keep going halfway. Let's deliver six. So we started saving money. Do you know what it's like to be like, okay. Penny by penny. Come and buy and buy. This is coming back. And we talked to our cast, which was like, we had an amazing cast of celebrities. Do you know they reshot and have never been paid? Wow. Yeah. The actors. Yes. And then the crew. The crew. They reshot on Project Belief, like it was worth doing again. We shot it on a shoestring budget and we got it done. And we're still looking to get more of it done. Can I tell you a hilarious story about that? What? I'm one of the few people yeah. that auditioned. No! And you didn't I, even I, notice. I, <laughs> and you didn't even notice I was there. Which uh, was an epic fail to save the list. Because oh listen, when I, when I reached there, it's some time ago, because it's some time ago, yeah, you know? Yes. You couldn't literally remember. When I reached there, I just went before you, you're one of the judges, and I took off my shirt. I was like, woo, six bucks. You're like, wow. And then you're like, okay, we call, we, we shall call you back. Nothing. I just knew there was, there was not as going to be a call. As soon as you took your but... share off. Let me tell you something. I have this phobia for good looking men. I don't like good looking men. Why? I just but, don't. But your partner is quite a charming man. That Cedric guy. Yeah. Let me say he's, he's quite good oh, looking. Oh, Cedric's pretty. <laughs> I said it. Cedric's pretty. Anyway, no. But um, I just, you know, like as soon as a man is too well packaged, I mean, what do you always look out for? Tell I, me if I, somebody comes before I, you and I, you're trying to audition. I, I, honestly, man. me, I, I want to see, I want to see the person. I want to see the hunger. I want to see the ability to become a chameleon. I want to see their uh, interpretation of the character. I want to see them move out of themselves and take on a, a different Of course. Uh, uh, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me put an argument on this. Because you see beneath the lies. Yeah. Sex appeal was part of it. Yes. It had to bring, you know? Yeah, you had to bring your A game. And then af after some years, I saw, but, but it's a good thing, you know? I, 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 I congratulated everybody. Even reflections. Reflections. You see, yeah, because, you know, I'll tell you why. People are attracted to beauty. Mm. Isn't that so? Yeah. In every shape or form, whether it's a car, whether it's a dress, mm. whether it's a human being, people are attracted to beauty. That's a failing we have in our innate system. So, when you're putting together something, you have to combine talent and beauty. Mm. And I find myself most of the time, I cast talent, but everyone has something beautiful about them. Mm. And it's not always physical. So when you, you come have in- to be able to read Yeah, straight. when you come in mm. and you lead with physical beauty, I straight away disengage. Sorry. But you know, but to most ladies, it works, right? No. Well, to maybe. But me, I'm, I'm, I'm like a different kind of lady. <laughs> but, but you still always confess about Hollywood. You've seen how Hollywood. Yes. It the has, much prettier you are, the much as you Again, role, yeah. it depends on who you have, who you are in front of. Yeah. I've met directors who just do not lead with physical beauty. I'm not trying to throw some shit on anybody, but you see Arnold Schwarzenegger? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Arnold, I don't think Arnold is one of the best actors. Yeah. Ever, but, but the dude is 6'2". Yeah. Is that huge? Yeah. 
it's it's a a Schwarzenegger. It's a Schwarzenegger. Yeah, it's a Schwarzenegger. <laughs> um, but okay, you know what? Everyone has their sort of thing. Me as a person, I'm. You know, I really, really. I'm not saying I want to change the film industry here. I just want people to understand. You should change it. No, I just want people to understand what we're capable of. Oh, yeah. You know, we are capable of so much more than what we churn out. Oh, yeah. So. I, I'll just, I'm, I'm not a pioneer. I don't think I'm reinventing the wheel, but I do know that um, the game will change. And it's our, changing our, very on, quickly. On our last part, I'm, I'm going to ask you if our industry is strong enough to compete maybe with the it's global stronger, standard. It's stronger than you think. You're going to take a pause. No! no let's take a pause. No. We return next week. Yeah, we shall return next okay, week with the last this part. This is the last one, and yeah. then I have to go. Next week on Chilling. I am a big fan of Shiba. Ooh. I am. Are you a shibaholic? Um, I'm, I'm, yeah. No, I wouldn't go so far as so much shibaholic, <laughs> but I'm almost there. Yeah. I'm on the verge. You're into I haven't that taken the leap, mm. but um, I think she's very talented. I think she's very dedicated. I think she's very ambitious. Chilling. Chillers, as you enjoy this episode, make it an effort to follow our social media outlets. All you've got to do is type in Chilling UBC TV, like us on our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter, and then also subscribe onto our YouTube channel.